Welcome back to our GTM for beginners course. In this lesson number five, we are going to talk about event tracking. And we kind of talked about event tracking already because we sent an event to Google Analytics for in our last lesson. Now we want to do this again in this lesson, but with a little bit of a twist. And I want to show you the capabilities of auto event tracking within Google Tag Manager. So let's dive in. So here I am inside of Google Tag Manager. And when we go over to our tags right here, we see the tag name and also the trigger that is attached to it. And all of these triggers have the same symbol, which means that they're actually based on a page view trigger. What does that mean? So let's go into our triggers right here. We have only one trigger created. If I go over to new and click into the trigger configurations, we can actually see the different kind of events when our tags get deployed. And the one that we use used so far was the page view trigger. This means Google Tag Manager triggers always need to have an event that they evaluate their conditions upon. And in our case previously, it was always the page view, meaning once the page load, it evaluated the trigger, does it turn true or false and fire our tags. But the cool thing about Google Tag Manager is that it has way more capabilities of firing our tags upon different interactions. So if you scroll down here, we have actually the click triggers and user engagement triggers such as as element visibility. So when a element is visible in the screen of the user, a form submit, scroll or YouTube videos. So interactions that are non-standard and really depends if users take these actions on your website and if you want to track them. So on our website here, for example, we could take a look at the different interactions. Obviously, somebody can click, somebody can type, somebody can scroll or if something is visible on the screen, we could track that. Lots of things going on. One that would make sense for us is actually a click on an add to cart button. So we know if somebody added something to cart and how often that actually happens. So let's send that information over to Google Analytics 4. In order to try this out, we can go back here inside of our Google Tag Manager menu and choose as the interaction a click. And there are two click triggers available and all elements and just links click trigger. In our case, this is actually not a link. It is a element that we click and then the website adds this to the cart automatically for us. So we actually need to go with the all elements click trigger. And what we're going to do right now is deploy a test click trigger so we know how it behaves. In order to do so, I'm just going to go and give it a name. So click and right here underneath this trigger fires, I don't want to choose any kind of restrictions for right now because we want to see how this trigger actually behaves. So let's click on save. And one other part that we now want to do is go over to variables and click here on configure built-in variables. So variables are kind of like placeholders that you have inside of Google Tag Manager and they can be filled by our triggers and there are specific built-in click variables that we can activate right here. So let's do that. And with those now activated, we can go into the preview mode to test out this trigger. All right, we are connected. Let's go over to our page inside of a product and actually click on the add to cart button. Now, if everything worked, we should see here on our overview, a new event called click. And this is possible only by the click trigger that we have just installed. Now there are no tags firing upon us clicking this, but our variables, again, our placeholders kind of get filled with information automatically through this auto event click trigger. And we have these click variables, click classes, click element, click ID, target, text, and so on. And anytime I click on a separate element, so for example, I click here on landing page, we should have another click to compare this to. So here it was. And these variables get filled in differently. So for example, right now the click text is landing page. As previously, it was add to cart. Now, obviously, I don't want to fire my tags anytime something is clicked on my website. I only want to fire it on certain events, certain things that I deem interesting to have in my analytics. And in our case, it's the add to cart button click. So an easy one would be to base our trigger off the variable click text equals add to cart. So all we need to do right now is go back to our Google Tag Manager into our triggers. And now we're going to turn our click test trigger right here into a specific one that listens to add to cart clicks. And we're going to do this by filling out these conditions right here that the trigger only fires on some clicks where, and here we can choose our variables, the click text contains or equals add to cart. So let's save this. 
And in order to try this out, we actually need to attach a tag to it. So let's configure that right away as well. We are going to go over to tags. And now we're going to send data over to a new Google Analytics 4 instance where we are going to send an event, which is our add to cart click. As a tag configurations, we are going to go with Google Analytics and then a Google Analytics 4 event. Now we need our measurement ID, which we have inside of Google Analytics or inside of your tag plan as well. So let me go and find that here under my data streams. Here we go. I'll put that here in place and then I need to give this event a name. So we could go with add to card click. And I use these underscores in between because it's Google Analytics 4 convention to do so. But really you could name it whatever you want. This is just best practice. Now we're going to scroll down and choose our trigger and we're going to choose our pre-created add to cart click trigger. So with that, we'll save this and try it out. Let's go over to preview. On our page, we are going to first click on this image here. We should see already a click. Yes, here it is a click and nothing fires. That is good because we only want to fire it once we click on the add to cart button. And let's find the click right here. And our GA4 event tag add to cart click has fired. If we click into it, we can actually see why the trigger turned true because these conditions have been met. And this is sending this information over. We should actually be able to see it inside of Google Analytics 4. Inside of our admin section, we have under data display our debug view. And here we have the information add to cart click. And that information should then also show up after 48 hours after it has been configured correctly. In your engagement reports, you should see that under events as well, if there are enough clicks to make the list actually. So with that, we have configured a Google Analytics event tag with the interaction of an add to cart click for our website. Don't forget, if you wanna take this live to all of your users, you need to submit a version, give it a descriptive name, and then publish it so it goes live onto your website. Now remember, this is just one of many interactions that you can deploy with the help of Google Tag Manager. There's also scrolls, YouTube views. It really depends on the interactions that you want to track on your website. I would encourage you to try this out right now and play around with the different trigger types and see how you can configure them. We also have a lot of more tutorials on this channel to show you how to utilize these kind of triggers inside of your Google Tag Manager. But this should really expand your capabilities with GTM already. And we are almost at the end of the course. In the next lesson, we are going to talk about the next steps that you should take in your GTM journey. So I'll see you over there. My name is Julian. Till next time.